The Canon RF 300-600mm is back in the news, with Canon rumors doubling down on it being an f5.6, while signaling a lower price and saying it's aimed at baby boomers and Gen Xers. But with the Sigma 300-600mm being a full stop faster at f4, why is Canon even bothering with an f5.6? If you're going to show up late, you'd at least better stand out. So what's Canon up to? We've got you covered, but first, punch that subscribe button. It means more to us than nailing focus on a running toddler shooting at f1.2. Hi, I'm Simon, your friendly photographer that likes to scan the news and rumor sites, saving you from the time of having to do so. Today we've got an interesting story, an interesting take on the Canon RF 300-600mm f5.6. And perhaps, perhaps it's just me, but all the leaks that we're getting on this lens make it, well, well, I'm, you know, I, I hate to say this, but it seems, well, confusing. Like, Canon is not exactly sure who to market the focal length 300 to 600 millimeters at. Could it be more entry level? Or is it a pro's pro lens? Canon rumors assertively stated. An RF 300 to 600 millimeter f5.6 L series image stabilized USM will be what we get, and it will be priced well below the $10,000 mark and be lighter than the big white 400 and 600 millimeter primes. Well, that tells us an awful lot right there that the much anticipated 200 to 500 that became the 300 to 600 millimeter isn't going to be the, well, a pro's pro level choice. It's going to focus on weight and price. And unlike the RF 200 to 800 millimeter F6.3 to 9, the 300 to 600 millimeter will be an L series built tough to avoid those accidental mishaps. And I know what you're already thinking. Sigma already beat Canon to the market with a 300 to 600 millimeter F4 at 65.99. Yeah, I, I know. It was announced for $59.99, but uh, in just a few short months, it's now, its price in US dollars is now $65.99. So back to my quandary here. Why is Canon then chasing F5.6? Well, that question is coming up next, or the answer to that question is coming up next. But first, we need to set the stage. You see, if Canon were to price this lens at around $3,000 as a cousin to the, well, 100 to 500 millimeter, f4.5 to 7.1, then all would make sense. With the RF 100 to 500 millimeter, f4.5 to 7.1, LIS USM, in and around $2,800 US, there's an awful lot of space for a product between it and the current $10,000 entry point for the big white pro lenses. And I think $6,500 is the price point that we could expect from Canon even if it is a stop slower. So Canon's going to be releasing their 300 to 600 millimeter many months after Sigma and all the fanfare around that new and unique lens that Sigma hyped up in a press interview late last year. And Canon's going to be doing it for a similar amount of money, but at a full stop slower. I'll admit, I'm a little bit dense at times. I don't know everything. In fact, I'm pretty ignorant, which is why I love to learn. So. I reached out to a pro wildlife photographer who earns his living in the field. He didn't have any leaks, but he was puzzled by what, well, the specs that Canon Rumors had mentioned, telling me that he can't validate this lens. I've been busy with too many projects, but this lens doesn't make any sense at all. I want speed and sharpness, that over everything else. I really don't care too much about weight and price. A lot of professional sports and wildlife photographers do prioritize speed and sharpness over weight and price. This is why the RF 100 to 300 millimeter F2.8 sells so very well, despite being priced at $10,199, or the RF 400 F2.8 at $12,999, the 600 millimeter F4 at $13,999. I think I've made my point here. So Canon's rumored zoom has the same focal range as Sigma, but a stop slower for what is essentially going to be the same amount of money. To have any chance of success, Canon's 300 to 600 is definitely going to have to be lighter and not just by a few ounces. 
The Sigma 300 to 600 is one heavy beast at roughly four kilograms. Uh, I think it's precisely around 3.985 kilograms. That's pretty heavy. And being an F5.6 allows Canon to shed an awful lot of, well, weight and reduce the cost. The one thing we don't know about though is what's the sharpness gonna be, compare, comparatively speaking, between the two lenses. Dustin Abbott refers to the Sigma as being extremely sharp over most of the frame and zoom range, noting that stopping down to f5.6 to f8 brings a small contrast bump at the long end. Being lighter by a few pounds would definitely be a plus for Canon. But the sharpness, well, if Canon could be sharper and lighter, well, that would be a pretty big deal. There is a massive market of baby boomers and older Gen X people that want high-end lenses that can be handheld. And the Sigma is not that lens, weighing in at 8.75 pounds or 3.985 kilograms. It's possible that Canon could bring the weight in line with the RF 100-300 millimeter f2.8, which is a very manageable 5.7 pounds or 2.59 kilograms. You can count me in that crowd. I'm part of that late Gen Xer that Canon Rumors is talking about, with a little bit of cash laying around, but not enough to buy a sports car. I recently took my family to the Toronto Zoo as we're getting ready to go back to school. My son really wanted to go. So I brought the RF 100 to 500 millimeter with me as part of a challenge. Could I take shots that didn't look like they were taken at the zoo? In the bright summer light, the 100 to 500 performs very well and it's priced much cheaper than the Sigma 300 to 600 millimeter F4 at around $3,000. But if the 300 to 600 millimeter comes out at around $6,500, I'm not going to be interested. I mean, that's almost three times the price that I paid for the 100 to 500 millimeter. And I love this lens, I really do. I wasn't disappointed with its performance, although I have to admit as one of those Gen Xers with arthritis in my hip and spine, the weight did get to me after a while, and it's no Wiener's Sigma's four kilograms. But in terms of alternatives to the 300 to 600 millimeter, being $6,500, and remember, that's the price point here. So if I was in the market for the Sigma at around $6,500 or the Canon RF 300 to 600 millimeter, well, then I'd pick up the 400 millimeter F 2.8, or maybe I'd spend a little bit less and get a used version and maybe even the EF version. The cheapest one that I could find on sale right now was 9748, but I've actually seen the EF 400 millimeter F 2.8 for as low as $4,000 this summer. I get it, being one of those older Gen Xers, I look at the 300 to 600 millimeter at four kilograms and well, it's too heavy for me. And at $6,500, that's not a welcoming price point. My recommendations, if you're part of the baby boomers or Gen Xers and you're looking for a really good solid lens that you can handhold that you want to take out on adventures. Well, maybe, just maybe, start with a much more affordable lens, an L series lens, a lens that's well built that isn't that heavy. It's cons it's about a third the weight of the Sigma, and it's probably going to be half the weight of the Canon. And that's the 100 to 500 millimeter f 4.5, fastest wide open to 7.1. And if you're shooting in the summer light, bright sun, you're certainly not gonna have any problems with this lens. The problem you're gonna have is when you get into that dusk and dawn time. And that's where a lens like the 100 to 300 millimeter F 2.8 really comes in and saves the day. The 300 to 600 millimeter isn't gonna do that for you. It's not gonna be, well, <laughs> it starts at F 5.6, this starts at F 4. If you're a baby boomer and you've got tons of cash, you want light lenses, get this lens, the 100 to 500 millimeter f4.5 to 7.1, as well as the 100 to 300 millimeter f2.8. And if you're looking for a used one of that, good luck. Periodically, I actually see it as being sold out. So they're in high demand and for very good reasons. Imagine for a second that you're, well, you're at an NFL game and you're down on the lines and you're shooting. It's heavy clouds, it's raining hard. Well, with that, with that lens and a good camera like the R3 or the R1, you can set your shutter to around one two thousandths of a second and still pull off really incredible cover shots. That's why people spend in excess of $10,000 for the 100 to 300 millimeter. I get a sense from in my, I, I just can't get, 
I, I'm tripping over my words here because the 300 to 600 millimeter f 5.6 well it's not all that fast and yes it does cut down on some it gives you ranges out in the field that what well, gives you more options but to be heavy still and at f 5.6 it doesn't help you with those low light conditions. Uh, and at $6,500, to me, it's from what we're hearing from Canon rumors, it's way too much of a compromise. But am I out of touch? We've got some pro photographers on Canon rumors that are reportedly saying that I'm looking forward to seeing this 300 to 600 millimeter. It gives me more options. But I've got others saying this lens doesn't make any sense to me. I want speed and I want sharpness. Are you in the market for this lens? Have you bought the Sigma? What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment section down below because I'm truly puzzled by this lens. I would have much preferred to see the 200 to 500 millimeter F4 come out, but apparently that's all been scrapped. Anyhow, thanks so much for tuning in. If you're interested in purchasing any of the lenses that I talked about or camera bodies in this video, please consider using my product links down below these guys right here because I get a small commission back, which really helps support this channel. It's around two to 5%. This channel is very much viewer supported. We don't do any sponsorships. And I, I, I gotta tell you too, when it comes to high-end lenses, if you're interested in getting into them and you can barely afford this Canon RF 100 to 500 millimeter, do yourself a favor, take a look at B&H and do a search, just say used and put in the lens because they don't open up unless you use the term used. Used uh, 100 to 300, used 400 millimeter f2.8 and check in periodically because I've seen the, the 400 millimeter f2.8 down for as low as $4,000. But you want to watch the rating. Uh, anything above nine, you're, you're perfectly fine. I bought tripods that were rated an eight definitely take a look and follow up with B&H if you have any questions because you can shed, you can save yourself a whole lot of money by buying used. Anyhow, thanks so much for tuning in. Have yourself a great day, a great weekend, or is it the week? I don't know. I'm recording this on the weekend and you're probably not going to see it till Monday or Tuesday. Thanks so much for watching. Have yourself a great day and we'll see you again soon.